Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is David here. Uh, I'm going to do something which is a little bit naughty and that's use some slides from my ex-employer Aviva. Um, there's a lot of hype about uh, Apple's new headset coming out, um, Microsoft releasing their kind of early preview to Mesh and their immersive meetings and Teams. Um, so I thought it's appropriate to kind of record what we did at Aviva back in the day uh, when we were trying to utilize uh, not really metaverse, but what I call digital spaces at Aviva. So Marcus Jolly and I um, did a lot of work on this um, together with Matt Billing and a lot of the graduates at the time. And I really wanted to just capture what we did. Um, this slide deck, funnily enough, is actually a slide deck that we prepared for Microsoft in order to try and get early access to that mesh uh, capability. So. Um, I'm kind of interested to see what anybody who works at Microsoft thinks of this if you're watching the video. Um, and for everybody else, hopefully this video, uh, it's going to be a bit long because it's a 30 slide deck presentation or 39. Um, but hopefully this video will help you understand how you could use the metaverse or the concept of virtual and, and meetings and digital spaces in your organization. And of course, if you want to find out anything more about this, please feel free to contact me or Marcus Jolly and we'll be happy to help you. So this is February 2022. Uh, this was done at my employer at the time, Aviva. So uh, please excuse any copyright infringement from using your logo here. Uh, but this very much you know, was just the work of um, Marcus and myself. Uh, a lot of it in our free time, I should say, although strictly speaking, we were uh, under the employment of Aviva. So um, this is really a timeline and a bunch of use cases for the use of digital spaces. So the background is, um, you know, what are digital spaces? Are they the future of remote hybrid engagement um, with both customers, employees and partners? Um, I'm going to talk through the journey so far. So what we did at Aviva. I'm going to talk through enterprise use cases, which all of those slides are actually from uh, work I did with um, Thomas Ficker from the VRAR, um, the VARA, sorry, the VRAR Association um, and his startup, uh, Dixperio. And I'm going to look briefly at platforms and tools, which is probably out of date by now, but we'll, we'll catch up on that. So I use this term digital spaces just to refer to um, experiences and uh, three dimensional rooms where you can do a variety of different things, including virtual meetings, virtual events, um, all sorts of things, as you'll see in the future. And the background really came from something I saw from uh, one of the sort of creators of Mozilla Hubs. Um, Greg, oh my God, I can't remember your name just now to give you the credit. Yeah, Greg Fodor, so G Fodor down there in, in Twitter. Um, these slides are pretty much kind of ripped from one of the slide decks he showed about Mozilla Hubs, just to give the full uh, credit there. So the concept is today we use our screens or so little tiny rectangles, be that an iPad, a laptop, a PC, or even a phone. Um, we use the internet to kind of tunnel and connect these two screens together. And in most video conferencing today, you share some kind of content on the screen, like a, a slide deck, or you might be looking at, you know, thumbnails or small images of each other. Or if you're lucky, it might be just a one to one call where you have a full screen video. But the concept is that these are kind of little tunnels. Um, and the issue is they have very low agency and low no presence. So you don't really feel like you're in the same room as the person and you have very little agency over that content that you're sharing uh, in there. Um, roll ahead to the future. And this is maybe something that's going to come with the Apple headset, um, XR spaces. So mixed reality or extended reality spaces, if you like. The idea is that you have a digital space where um, you have two people through the use of a headset or some kind of immersive technology who are co-present in that digital space. Uh, therefore, you have full presence. Uh, so with the caveat that you're digital, digitally represented, but you are present in the same space. You feel like you're there with that person. They feel like they're there with you. And uh, yeah, of course, you have high agency. So you can reach out 
and um, grab things in the digital space. You can both reach out and grab the same things. You can hand an object to somebody else. You can build a house from bricks, for example. Um, there's, you can point at something uh, and all within the same space. So high engagement is really the goal there, right? Or the, the promise. So this um, extended reality for work scene is exploding. Uh, I'm part of a group in Facebook, I think it is, uh, with that name as well. Um, so Facebook um, ch changed the name to Meta. Microsoft Teams are building you know, virtual rooms. There's a whole bunch of apps which are doing pretty well, like Spatial, Glue, Meet in VR. Uh, okay, the wild's been um, acquired. They're all really focused on... Um, sorry, Engage is worth a mention there. You'll see that later. But these applications are really were focused on doing things in digital spaces and fostering collaboration. Altspace is, is gone, unfortunately. Uh, this is Engage, top right here. <clears throat> this is Glue, bottom right. Uh, this was the Wild. And in the middle, we have Spatial, which is something that has pivoted several times. And this diagram from Charlie Fink here is really saying, well, let's try and get this um, sense of presence and agency and the engagement that that brings through these digital experiences. Um, we added this one here, behavior. So this is something we learned through our experiences at deploying this technology, both at Experio and in Aviva. Um, so basically you need to help people understand how to behave as an avatar in these digital spaces. Um, and that's something that was a key thing. So people learn that as they get used to using an avatar. Um, because you can do things which you can't do in real life, like you can walk through people, you can teleport instantly from one side of the room to the other. Um, there's a whole bunch of behavioral things that help um, create the best possible experience in that kind of situation. However, um, of course, you know, wearing a, a virtual reality or a augmented reality headset is not really for everybody. It's a really big social and, and physical barrier for a lot of people to wear um, a headset. Um, of course, the headsets are getting smaller, they're getting more comfortable. We all expect that the Apple headset will just be more cool and more socially acceptable just because it's Apple. Um, but essentially, all of these digital experiences can be experienced to a lesser extent with through a, through a two-dimensional screen, so through these rectangles. So digital spaces, agency, and some presence are improved engagements, maybe not um, as improved or as high engagement as you could have with a fully immersive experience i.e wearing a headset but if you experience one of these um so let's say you participate in an experience in this digital space but using your screen so you're effectively driving your avatar like a computer game then you have much less presence but perhaps you feel a little bit of presence because you feel like you're in the room at least digitally at the same time and we think that you know you're still going to have a lot of a lot more engagement than you can have through a video call, so you can still point at things, pick things up, and collaborate in ways which were otherwise impossible. So that's the kind of promise of digital spaces. Um, yeah, what happened at Aviva? So this slide here um, was a really uh, I was really proud of what we did here. Um, basically, March 2020. Um, there was a sales kickoff. Um, pretty much they had to put it together very quickly as a remote event. Um, as you can see here in March, so just after, I think it was like March the 12th that we had lockdown in Germany with my birthday. Um, yeah, and uh, Aviva put on the sales kickoff and I was kind of pissed off that there wasn't any social aspect to it. Um, also that I wasn't invited and it was a digital event. There's, there's literally no limit to how many people you can invite to a digital event usually, right? So I threw together an alt space VR party, invited uh, about, I don't know. Yeah, invited, no, it can't be right. Maybe about 500 people, I thought it was about 200 people. Um, a whole bunch of people accepted the request but couldn't install the right version of alt space through the Microsoft Store because we had a slightly... Um, incompatible version of Windows. It blocked a bunch of people's computers. Um, it caused all sorts of issues. And we had about 40 attendees, maybe not all at the same time, but over the whole um, two days when I ran this alt space, um, digital space. And we did have one bigger session with about 20 people at the same time popping in and out. And a lot of those people said, wow, okay, this is um, 
got a lot of potential. We could, you know, do software demos with this kind of technology and it got a lot of interest. Um, I formed a kind of informal virtual collaboration tech team. So this was just a, a team on Microsoft Teams, um, about 25 people in that. And uh, we just discussed like what we could do with this technology. Um, some of the people helped me to create a showcase video uh, on Mozilla Hubs. Uh, I'm just gonna take a big risk here. I don't even have any ah. no, I'm All right, so there is a video here. Let's just show that. Uh, so this video was basically thrown together. You can see here a bunch of graduates were in here from uh, Aviva's graduate scheme. So thanks, Lyric. Mar Mark has been a key member of this team for a long time. And we basically tried to figure out what could we use this technology for. Um, so you can see here, we can watch videos together. We can make a virtual exhibition with a booth here with slides. Um, this was really amazing um, stuff in Mozilla Hubs. You can experience 360 content. So the inside of this um, offshore vessel. Um, we could create very simple digital twins. So here was like the inside of a wind turbine, uh, which funnily enough features in some of the Microsoft videos of Mesh these days. Uh, and this was obviously just simulating. This was really thrown together um, on the public version of Hubs at the time. So you can see here we brought in a electric motor for people to look at. Um, we were really just trying to explore what was possible here. Classroom training, so more formal training, software training and software, for example, this could have been a way to deliver it. Um, talks and meetings, um, yeah, the usual kind of more office environment. As you can see here, this was the exterior breakouts and social. Um, some of the people uh, of Eva at the time, so Charlotte, I'm thinking of you, um, basically got a lot of the graduates into that. And I thought this was really in interesting. We could have done, you know, panel discussions. You can see here a few of us are live. There's a couple of screenshots in there. Just, oh no, Mark's alive as well. So there was loads of things that we, we could have done there um, that I thought was really interesting. Um, right, now I'm going to struggle to get back to where I was. Uh, okay, I thought I opened this. Just bear with me a second. That's really weird. Let's see if we can open this again. It's all live. Downloads. Ah, I was totally in the flow here. Sorry about this. Right, so... Um, Oh, this is not, <laughs> this is not the thing that I was viewing. All right, this is gonna work for us. All right, so we're back in again, the journey so far. So that was the XR showcase video. This little sizzle reel kind of helped people to understand what was possible. Um, Matt Billing was a part of that journey as you saw there and he became the head of the center, customer experience center. That's what the CEC stands for, which was our kind of demo centers, uh, one in the London Cannon Street office and one in Houston. And he was given the task by Steen at the time, our head of uh, revenue, CRO, to recreate this digitally. So it looked like we had a good technology with Mozilla Hubs and we went ahead and basically built this. So Marcus Jolly joined the journey at this point. He had 3D modeling skills, which he really wanted to use. He was interested in the whole VR collaboration area. And he learned how to do like really lightweight, web ready um, environments that had, you know, baked lighting basically. Um, so we put it together. We had the functionality complete in September, 2020, and then went live at the end of 2020. So we basically launched it. We told the sales force, um, so really full launching it and the sales kick off the year later. So, so this is a whole year. Um, and we did use it at that sales kickoff, breakout rooms, about 400 users, I estimate probably quite generously, but not simultaneously. So people popped in out of these rooms. To be honest, we didn't really launch it properly. We didn't give people training. We tried to make it self-service, but that 
kind of work to a certain extent. And of course, you have the usual technical problems with hubs, with audio, with firewalls and all these kind of things. Um, yeah, I kind of pushed the boundaries and I used it for the Marine user meeting. That was an area I was responsible for. So the Marine user meeting was usually a, a kind of meet the experts, geeky um, community that get together the users of, of even Marine tools. I used to be face to face in Malmo and we managed to use this um, with about 70 participants really taking place uh, in this in these digital spaces on hubs on hubs cloud in March and this was like a live public event so that was a real um, for me it was a real kind of game changer and a real you know test of fire of the technology um, Roll forward a month, we used it again uh, for something called the Aviva Fest. It was a customer, customer, sorry, it was an internal comms event f internally for, um, yeah, the employees of Aviva. We were merging with Schneider Electric Software at the time. Um, there was a chance to meet the ELT, so we had the head of uh, HR, uh, Kiva, and we had um, James Kidd was in there, I think, and we met a you know, we gave a sort of VIP experience to a few people and then we opened up the rooms. And again, it was about 300 users uh, looking at the data spread across five room instances and, and not simultaneously. Um, we then engaged with Acker, Acker Solutions here, who wanted a virtual coding camp. So hopefully not too much, giving too much away there. Um, we did that with uh, Dexperio as an external contract if you weren't interested in doing it. Um, we used it again, we started to engage with the new um, HR team coming in from Schneider, so Carol Jackson, um, who was very supportive of this. So we used the same environment, this digital CEC, Mozilla Hubs based, for uh, onboarding, for, uh, yeah, onboarding sessions. So we ran several of those. Um, I think we had technical problems showing videos and it kind of gradually lost a bit of momentum. Um, and then, yeah, roll ahead to February 2022, um, I was trying to push us onto Altspace because it basically had a be better event management tools. And we found out through Microsoft, you could get a private um, shard, a cloud shard in order to, to run this on, but we never got that. Um, so I left Aviva in July 2022. So that's you know why this story kind of stops there. So what did we really do with it? Well, the value, I think, was pretty clear. So we had key customers, Coca-Cola, Acker, Worley Parsons, Heinkel, visit the CEC. The feedback was feedback was pretty good. You know, Viva doing innovative things. I've never tried anything like this, et cetera, et cetera. Probably had about hundreds of graduates uh, and potential Viva employees invited to the spaces for informal chats. Um, more memorable, basically, was one major feedback. Um, we had about 200 plus attempts to enter the expo booths at the sales kickoff. Uh, 600 attempts to enter rooms at International Com Festival. So these are the, the people who were entering, but for various reasons got kicked out or the people who actually got in as well. Um, 70 customers in the one and only external events. So 30 stayed for more than two hours. At this point, well, I probably shouldn't show this, um, the engagement of Aviva digital events had dropped to um, a, a average of 18 minutes engagement time. So that was really quite low. That's basically all of the Aviva events. So sorry if this is in breach of anything, but I don't work there anymore. Um, 70 new starts gone through the onboarding experience, at least at the time. Um, the cost, we had a £2,000 budget um, and a 3D Max license subscription for 3D modeling. It took significant time, especially for markets, to model environments. Um, some of them charged internally, um, mostly private contribution from, from Marcus. So Marcus really made that happen. It wouldn't have been possible without him. And significant time from evangelists and helpers at events, so it's me, plus the graduates, really. Um, key feedback, so very memorable part of um, otherwise one-way digital events so far. So all the events really didn't have a social aspect to them. It was just watch a PowerPoint, basically through video stream. Um, some people really had their mind blown. The ability to speak to our executives face-to-face -face was a great use of the tech. Um, um, to be able to go into customer's 3D CAD model really gives the non-technical folks an appreciation of the work. So we, we actually converted some of Eva CAD models with Pixis Studio and uh, could run like a million polygon uh, plant model in the web uh, as a part of those um, experiences. Um, 
we did a very simple polycam scan. Uh, this was Christian Graham basically scanned with his phone. Um, and we did the scan of the, the office and gave a few people access to that as well. Um, other people did said it doesn't add anything to the onboarding. I can understand that. I think the design of the onboarding could have been better to incorporate some of the unique abilities of uh, 3D digital spaces. We had big problems with getting videos to synchronize properly. Basically, um, the lowest, the slowest speed determined whether the videos would play. So the person with the lowest network connection, and we were having like one megabit uh, connections at the time. So very hard to test that um, in reality, but yeah, the tech just wasn't ready. And that's why I was looking at alt space, which was slightly better. Um, we didn't have any control of the participants really, that just wasn't in hubs at the time. Again, why we were looking at alt space and audio quality with the 50 plus participants, it's just a well-known problem that streaming 50, 50 plus streams concurrently over a, a low bandwidth connection just doesn't work. Um, right, these slides are really coming from um, uh, non-Aviva stuff. Um, so the work I did with Thomas Ficker. So basically, this diagram I found really interesting. This is digital business technology platform from Gartner. Um, you can see it's June 2016. And basically companies that are trying to become digital, they end up having or building these uh, major um, subsets of platforms. So an ecosystem platform to engage with partners. Most companies have this information systems platform um, to engage with their employees and customer facing ones, you know, B2C, as a B2, well, yeah, and B2B certainly have this customer experience platform. So this could be an app store, for example. And if you deal with things of so your ship operator or a plant operator, you, you have an IoT platform. And digital spaces, for me, really actually cover pretty much the space in the, in the middle. You can use them to engage with partners. You can use them to engage with customers. You can use them to engage with employees. And in those digital spaces, you can connect to data from things. So that's the way that I see um, those things being used. Uh, the customer hub, um, yeah, so what was the concept? To create some kind of cool innovation space or customer space where you invite people and you give them a nice time. Um, and we ended up doing this, so uh, virtual supplement to the physical space, invite VIP customers to a brand, a digital hub, demonstrate your products and services in a unique way. So we could actually Uniquely, we could share several screens in the same space. So we could actually give a better demo than we could on Zoom or Teams because you could go into a large space and have a widescreen video like this. You could have um, one screen showing a CAD application, another screen showing um, an IoT analytics application all at the same time. And that's an absolutely unique thing about these digital spaces. We could hold small events very easily. So we actually did product launches, shareholder days, uh, which we didn't do investor events, which we, but we could have done easily these kind of things, given you know a team to kind of set up and curate the experiences. Um, I still think this will give your customers a wow experience if you manage it and create it with a bit of love. Um, you can allow your salespeople and experts to engage more naturally with clients. So because of spatial audio, if you're wandering around this space as an avatar, just like a conference or you know uh, an on-site workshop, you can just wander up to people and say, hey, what do you think of the presentation so far? So this is something that sales guys didn't have the whole time during lockdown, so it was really important. Um, you can present your products with the best possible tool. So if you've got software products, presenting multiple screens in the same space or even holographically, so 3D content, is by far a better way than presenting over a video call. Um, yeah, open your customers' minds to new ways of working, have a persistent space as a permanent record of each customer visit. So these Mozilla Hubs um, rooms were persistent. So you could put sticky notes on the wall, leave 3D models. Uh, you know, some of the tools that exist these days allow you to cr create avatar recordings. So really, really valuable stuff. And for me, it allows you to develop the concept of digital real estate. So we know all about the metaverse, gold rush, people buying property online for nothing. Um, you know, with with most of these platforms or Mozilla Hubs, um, which you have full control of these days, you could start to create your own digital real estate and do stuff with that and have that as a persistent space and use it. You get a lot more value from this than, uh, well, 
in terms of ROI than any kind of uh, real estate that you're going to pay real money for. Um, yeah, customer events. So this is what we did. This was the three rooms that we had for the Marine event. Here's uh, Dracos giving a PID demo by the looks of it. And we had a bunch of customers here, some of them talking to each other in the background. And here's the group photograph here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, about 28 people here. Uh, to be fair, about six or seven of them of EVE employees. Um, Project Collaboration Center. So this was, um, yeah, something we did for a customer. They wanted to have um, some kind of collaboration room like this, like a project control room that was virtual, where you could share sticky notes, you could uh, share multiple screens. And these screenshots basically show what was possible. Um, yeah, bring, bring your cross business unit teams together. So um, different business units that are not co-located, they have this huge problem about being together, right? And you can bring them into a workshop together physically. That's a great way to do it. You get that nice cross fertilization of ideas and collaboration, but that costs a lot of money and it's, it's harder to do these days. Um, virtually with a project collaboration center, you can do these kind of things. Um, you can use a full spectrum of collaboration tools, post-it notes, 3D pens, whiteboard screens, sharing, 360 and 3D models. You can even bring in Miro these days into these uh, rooms and have an interactive Miro board. You can record minutes of meetings and capture photos of key moments. So you've got all the tools you need to, to capture all these kind of things and screenshots from the screens which are shown in the space. And you, as you can see here, because it's because we built this on web, you can bring in Teams, Miro, Slack, Discord, etc. Um, a neutral place for disparate teams to meet, a sense of physical connection between remote teams, use presence and agency to focus your workers and make memorable collaborative experiences, S share several different software applications in a single space. So this is really important, um, especially large you know, EPC engineering companies, they need to share an Aviva CAD model, a Navisworks CAD model, a Hexagon CAD model, in the same space and be able to discuss them and look at them at the same time. And it's very hard to do that via Microsoft Teams or Zoom. Um, and I think you could even go further by bringing in 360 content. And in theory, you can beam in, you know, full, fully streamed 3D content as well. Um, so there was loads of potential for um, project collaboration centers, specifically in large capital projects, industries, all this kind of stuff. Custom project launches. We did this with TechBinder. That's a startup out of Netherlands. Um, they're using some of the Viva software and they were launching essentially an IoT analytics box for the marine industry. And they were really cool. We did this really short notice. They had their date for their product launch. They had their uh, list of invites. And at short notice, I threw together this um, ship here. This is like the Dockwise Giant, I think it was, a 3D model I found. This is like a dome for presentations. Uh, we threw it together really quickly, but we had a very good uh, turnout. So ship owners, technical superintendents, um, generally more conservative kind of people, mostly from the Netherlands, which helped. Uh, and they came in and just interacted with the presentation here very well. Um, we had the guys doing their presentation in avatar form. And then we had the 3D model of the um, IoT box that they made and we showed you know where you put it in the bridge and where the cables go and this kind of stuff. Um, so this was a very successful product launch, I thought. Um, okay, physical event planning, we never used it for this, but I've been involved in a lot of event planning for Aviva. And the amount of things that go wrong because you don't have a common understanding of the, the physical space was just unbelievable. So I used to do a little bit of planning for, um, you know, expo areas of uh, large events. And I found that using 3D was an absolutely amazing tool um, to do this kind of planning. So here's a little example here. We've got the stage. Um, we've got, you know, maybe some posters or some lighting. Um, we've got some toilets here. We've got some food trucks. And you, you know, you can draw in the roots of people, how people are expected to flow around. Or imagine you had a 3D scan of a hotel. You could um, drop in your 3D models of booths. You could um, drop in your models of signage, branding, all sorts of stuff. And I feel like um, 
this is a massive, massive, massive business opportunity for somebody to do event planning with 3D technology better. Um, exhibition booths, yeah, pretty standard. You know, you just make yourself a little booth, you put posters up. Uh, this is my friend at Circle 8 Brewery and my other friends at Dario's Empanadas. Got a food truck, got a, a, a brewery. And a, um, this is the kind of thing you can do. You can easily make a little virtual booth where people can walk up to it in avatar form and interact with your products. So 3D models of empanadas, for example, uh, or just talk about beer. You know, this is all totally available to do for very little money and relatively little effort. Um, 3D presentation spaces for sales. So this was the customer experience center we had at Aviva. This is what it looked like. It was a, a pseudo copy of the London office. Um, at least this front area here was pretty much a copy where we've got this nine meter long LCD screen. Um, but we created these other spaces here where we could put 3D models of the industry that we were talking to people about. So this is a, a 360 model of a plant. Um, and in here at the time was a control room. And in this little room here, we had a, a, a sort of virtual, rel no, augmented reality view of a pump in the real situation. So this could be a laser scan, this could be CAD model, and this could be, you know, control room. And we did this for brewing, for marine, for power industry, I think. Um, so they took the same room and created different industry specific um, experiences in it. Digital twins, um, yeah, so what I would call a low fidelity digital twin it was very easy to create a scan of something and import that into one of these digital space platforms. Um, so it's gonna be Microsoft Mesh in the future. This was Mozilla Hubs, um, but you can just scan and import in a matter of minutes. Yeah, it was an area which I think really could have been expanded upon, um, but the, the fact that this was possible even a couple of years ago, just to scan the area, took about five minutes. And as you can see, it's not perfect, but when you drop into this as an avatar, you get an understanding of that space, which is impossible to have if you're looking at, you know, even at a picture of it. So um, this is, you know, the, the kind of coffee in the kitchen area. There's a really nice little reading corner in here. This is that big nine meter screen I talked about before. Um, so very easy to bring in what I'd call sort of low fidelity digital twins. Career fair, recruitment, onboarding. These were all things that we ended up doing uh, with HR at Aviva. So again, you just reuse this space, but you change the content. So this is a group of actual uh, new recruits at Aviva and they're looking at a video which uh, the CEO, Peter uh, Hervig at the time prepared and it was basically them viewing quite a lot of videos. So that's why I think they felt it didn't really add much to view these videos as an avatar instead of viewing the videos uh, just on a video conference. But I really wanted them to go into 3D models of plants together and, you know, do hide and seek or treasure hunts and all these kind of things. That was the idea that I had uh, with that. Um, yeah, and we did talk actually talk to a few companies. We talked to also Great Ormond Street um, about doing these kind of career fairs. I think that's a great use case for this technology. Again, when everybody's at home uh, and not able to, to get out there. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I have a, a bit of a cough just now. Sales training. Uh, let me just pause this again. Yeah, thanks for sticking with me. As you know, I, just, I don't do any editing on this stuff, just like to get the content out. So another cough attack. Um, yeah, so sales training, uh, Mark Beckman, who's at Aviva with me at the time, really thought this was a, a great potential. I've been on the sales training team uh, briefly at Aviva, so I did one of their world roadshows. And we basically went around the world and <clears throat> showed people what the value proposition is through a series of PowerPoints. We did some workshop type uh, sales training uh, events with people all around the world. I think you could fully do this in the digital space. You've got breakout areas, you've got the ability to present 360 content, 3D models, which was extremely important for Aviva because the business basically deals with 3D models for their customers, at least the engineering part of it. Um, and in theory, 
it would be using a VR headset is a great way where sales can practice their pitches and role play sales scenarios. So that's why those sales training workshops are face to face so people can role play. And that's an important part of, of sales training, uh, at least, you know, for newer people. <clears throat> um, and it certainly helps people to understand how, you know, a CDO or a CIO might react to your sales pitch. Uh, it certainly puts you under pressure and helps people to understand, you know, how to give the right kind of response to people. I think that's important. I think for, you know, experienced salespeople, not so useful, uh, but certainly for new up and coming younger salespeople. Um, co-working spaces, digital offices. So I thought this was a great idea. You know, I was personally looking at going to a co-working space just to be around people. And I was really surprised that we work and, you know, all these kind of co-working spaces didn't do a pivot and try and do this digitally. Um, this was a, a space which I downloaded from Sketchfab, but you know, you can see here, you could easily make a co-working space. Um, Acker Solutions here engaged with us to essentially build that. They wanted this coding camp where people from India, from Norway, from London could get together virtually and you know, look at each other's code and discuss and just walk around and see what was going on. I think there's a great potential for this as well for hackathons. Um, so you can create hackathon kind of spaces. Um, <clears throat> yeah, sorry about this Aviva, but it's, it's out there now. <laughs> um, yeah, this was another absolutely brilliant case. So we've got design review software today like Revit, um, Aviva Engage, all sorts of things, but they're not multiplayer, right? Um, <clears throat> so using Mozilla Hubs, we found it pretty easy to just bung in a Revit model or an Aviva CAD model. Um, as you can see here, it, was, it competed with Aviva's own tools. So yeah, that was why we didn't really promote it. But basically, the, this is what all the customers were asking for is like, we're stuck at home. Why can't we be in the same model at the same space? Um, no app install, no login in the case of Mozilla Hubs. You've got collaboration features like pointer, persistent 2D and 3D markup, 3D model import. Um, it was just amazing what you could do with hubs at the time, but nobody uses it for that. Okay, you got security issues, that's the reason. Uh, panel discussion space, yeah, we did this for the VR, AR, so VR, AR, it should be the VR and AR Association. Um, we just created a 3D space. We hosted panel discussions here. Everybody came in disappointingly in 2D mode, uh, but what the hell. Um, <clears throat> yeah, we had predefined seating and presentation areas, we had predefined camera areas, um, we could have done a much better job editing the camera footage together for um, a beautiful video afterwards. Benefit, I've not even finished this slide. Um, I would say these days that this kind of thing you can do very nicely in Flipside Studio software, which is something you can get for the MetaQuest and for your desktop. Right, key requirements. Um, <clears throat> yeah, you need a backend platform, right, which can scale according to how many users are on it. Uh, you need a fallback server, so we didn't have that with Mozilla Hubs. Um, it should be a web-based solution, so you don't have installation, but you can have integration with other online services, Miro, Trello, <coughs> Altassian. This is something that hopefully Microsoft enable with Mesh and Teams. Um, in that case, we needed back-end integration to Aviva's digital twin platform. So if, if your collaboration solution for digital spaces can connect to an industrial backend for digital twins, then it becomes really, really powerful. So, you know, you're in a meeting, you're using Microsoft Teams technology, and imagine you can just securely connect to Aviva Connect, and you can get your 3D CAD data stream, you can get your real-time data stream. That, you know, is so powerful. Uh, I don't think Aviva need to go and build that on their game engine you know, to just use everything that's in Unity or Microsoft Teams, where you they cover all the collaboration and communication stuff with Office applications and just create the SDK to the CAD data stream and the real-time data stream. You need spatial audio, you need support for hundreds of users. Um, <clears throat> excuse my typos here. Super user admin requirements, all oh, typos. Um, control access to name users. So you basically need pretty heavy user control and a really nice interface for that. Um, the ability to create custom environments. So these days it's pretty much a Unity SDK. <clears throat> Audio zones, trigger volumes, basic interactivity. So we didn't have this in hubs at the time, but um, 
frame uh, VR, has audio zones, trigger volumes, and a whole bunch of this stuff these days. Uh, the ability to import videos and photos, 360 and flat, slides, PDF, uh, directly from systems of record. So of course, in an enterprise environment, you want that to be your SharePoint, Teams, um, <clears throat> all of these kind of things. Import of 3D models, so CAD, Mesh, different kinds of 3D here. Point Cloud, Azure remote, remote rendering would have been great. Import of audio, so simple audio files, or even actually mm, holographic recordings, so spatial recordings of avatars would have been really good. Um, <clears throat> waypoints and spawn points to control the user's experience. Links to waypoints and other digital spaces, so the ability to hop from one digital space to another one, so metaverse. Media frames to allow on-the-fly additional content by users in controlled frame. Um, control of spatial audio settings, control of users in the room. So the, <clears throat> these were the kind of things that we learned uh, during that time at Aviva that are really important admin requirements. Participant requirements, customizable avatars. Ready Player Me was an excellent example of this. You upload a selfie, you can make your own avatar, you can change its clothes, it's got a persistence across different platforms. Uh, absolutely excellent avatar system. Webcam based avatars is really nice if you're not using a VR headset and you just want to participate, having your webcam as your head is an, is an awesome way. And there's some solutions like Room VR, which do auto green screening. So they just kind of delete your background and your, your just the head and shoulders, which looks really good. Device agnostic access, so PC, Mac and mobile VR are the main hardware platforms, but you need it to work on phones, iPads, everything. Uh, therefore web. Ability to share content, so ideally shared browser broadcast, shared screen, as high res as possible. So Mozilla Hubs did allow really high res screen streaming, but they did kind of throttle that a little bit. Um, and that used to allow us to broadcast large um, resolution screens uh, with really you know good clarity. And that was really important for um, sharing screens, multiple screens in that kind of demo situation. Um, or, you know, an easy cloud-based media upload, which most of the platforms offer today. <clears throat> it's probably the most secure thing for, for good performance. Share multiple screens at the same time. Not everybody allows you to do this. Uh, hubs and Frame allow you to do it. I can't remember if anybody else does. Text chat, of course. Emoticons, camera person mode for streaming, so recording this and making it accessible is really important. So having that camera mode is really important. Lessons learned. Yeah, I mean, even today in 2023, uh, there's no perfect single platform for all the potential use cases today. Technology is still in the bleeding edge, but maturing rapidly. Local users, devices, and network speeds are the main challenge. That's the case with hubs, at least. Um, there's a much higher learning curve than video conferencing. So. Um, if you think about video conferencing, Zoom and Teams, loads of people still can't share their screens reliably. Uh, can you see my screen? Can you hear me? All of these kind of frictions that people have today, it's amazing. It's a relatively simple thing, but imagine that with avatars and digital spaces, it, it's more uh, complex. So plan for onboarding and learning time. Don't just throw people into it. Younger people, yeah, they probably get it, but older people, don't throw them in there. Um, yeah, the experience in fully immersive VR is just way better for these kind of things. You feel like you can walking up to a booth to look at content. You can grab 3D objects and look at them naturally, turn them around. Uh, yeah, you can walk up to people and see if they're looking at you, see if they're paying attention to you. Uh, spatial audio makes it feel like you're, you're close to people. Um, but the hardware and comfort are still challenges. Just so many people don't want to wear a VR headset for obvious reasons. And even if they do, you know, comfort is, is still a challenge unless you buy, you know, a good uh, strap. Um, you really need to plan for a team of, of real people to support this. So, yeah, just because you're going digital for events, it doesn't mean that you can run the event <clears throat> fully autonomous, autonomously yet. Uh, although, you know, generative AI, chat GPT, all these kind of things are really going to help to make better avatars, um, which will be able to interact with people and perhaps even guide them one day. Um, but if you need five people to run a physical event, then you need five people to run the digital event. So, for example, if you've got three rooms, you need one person in each room at least. Uh, you need your presenters. You need people guiding people as they come into rooms. Um, there's actually quite a high 
manpower requirement on digital events when done in digital spaces. Um, but that's the whole point. You can use your people, use your best people to create engagement and to create activity and interaction. And that's what you're not going to get if you just do a video conferencing solution for an event. There's no travel costs in hotels, of course, right, for those people. But allow your people to make it a great event. Uh, the platform needs to support 3D environment creation, curation of events, and maximizing user experience. So, um, yeah, I, I think Altspace VR, you know, wasn't really, really good at this. Um, you could do this through Unity. You had some curation of events. Actually, Altspace having good in in space, in digital space curation and maximizing the user experience. So platforms, this is changing all the time. So WebXR 3D platforms, for me, by far the best because you've got no barriers to entry, basically. So it's instant access on any device, deployable to your own cloud or you know, corporate cloud, persistent rooms, dedicated room per customer event. You can create multiple, multiple rooms. And well, all of the, them allow you know, tracking with sales systems in the back end. Hubs and Frame are the two major ones here. There's probably more, so excuse my sniffles here. Big biz platforms. So this is very relevant. Uh, Meta and Microsoft have their own meeting focused apps and development. This is Meta Horizon Workrooms, a pretty mature tool for purely VR focused uh, you know, meetings, sharing screens and doing work together, smaller groups. This is a screenshot of, I think what's gonna be called now, um, what's it called? Microsoft SharePoint Immersive Spaces, I think it's called. There's gonna be a mode in SharePoint where you can just click and go into virtual meeting like this in, in avatar mode. Early access version in spring 2022, they were a year late uh, for various reasons. Um, yeah, so it's Meta and Microsoft are the main ones. Let's see what Apple do in this space. Uh, leading VR first collaboration platform. So these guys are the startups. They're really worth mentioning. Um, my personal favorite is Glue. It's an enterprise focused, secure platform. It's got beautiful 3D environments. It's got solid 3D spatial audio. Um, the functionality is just really stable. And we, we like to use this, you know, in the, the groups I'm in, Zero Event and XR for work. Um, engage, yeah, I've got really mixed feelings about it. Its user interface was a bit too designery, which meant it was crap and not functional. Um, they've pivoted to go from an AR solution to a VR solution to become a full metaverse NFT uh, kind of gallery. But actually, Spatial has really good functionality. It's really easy to add 3D environments these days. And they're kind of going in the direction of Roblox, where you can create more interactive game experiences. So that's worth watching. Remio should be in here. Remio is um, <clears throat> kind of like Rec Room, but enterprise focused. I've got friends working there, so Remio should be in here. And Engage is really worth uh, mentioning here. It's a little bit more of a formal um, education focused platform, but Engage are really going from strength to strength here. As you can see, uh, this is the kind of experience you can have in Engage here. And Meet in VR, probably worth mentioning as well. We don't hear too much about those guys up in Denmark. Um, two and a half D platforms, proximity chat. So there's a bunch of these, which really uh, grew out of nothing during the the pandemic. Uh, I don't know who's still left, but Room 3D, Gathered Town, Spatial Chat, Wonder. Um, this one here was Room 3D. This was the one that green screened your webcam, as you can see here. These are people attending without a VR headset. This is just them in in webcam mode, and I thought that was the best two and a half D effect, although I never really got to test it properly because it was still in beta. Uh, I think this is Gather Town. It was just basically a Zoom call at the top, but you had spatial audio with your little avatars below. Something similar here for spatial chat and wonder. Uh, they all had different versions of this, but it seemed to have kind of you know, died down a bit. Yeah, so loads of copyright stuff for Aviva there. Um, <clears throat> basically, I'm just using Aviva's branding there, so sorry about that. Uh, but this was done at Aviva. So again, you know, I think Aviva really supported this and were very innovative in terms of being a company that was going to support this. Uh, could have done more. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's it for now. And I hope you find this long video uh, useful to you. If you want to understand anything about 
how to do these scenarios at the at the end here or of Eva's journey, please let me know and I'm happy to discuss with you. That's all for now. Cheers. Bye-bye.